Today, I'm gonna to answer the question, why isn't my generator starting? I'm gonna share with you seven simple things you can check and do to get your generator running right now in under eight minutes. So let's go. Number one, and I have to ask this, but is the fuel shut off? Now, if this is a brand new generator to you, you might not realize that there is a fuel shut off on a lot of generators. So if you're not sure where it might be, I'll show you where it is on mine, but grab your manual online or the paper one, look up, does my generator have a fuel shut off? Because 10% of the time, that's all it is. Is it in the run or the on position? Something I didn't realize when I first got a generator was, in order to start it, it has to be in the on or the run position. On the Predator here, you gotta flick it to run. On the Furman that's below that, you just gotta switch it to an on section. So you gotta know, is it in the on or <laughs> is it in the off? Because you'll never get it started. You'll give yourself a bad case of tennis elbow if it's not in the on or run position. Those are the two simplest. Is your oil low? Almost all new generators have a low oil shutoff or low oil cutoff. If your oil's below a certain level, it won't start. That's to save you the frustration of starting it with low oil and absolutely wrecking it. Easiest way, open your dick stick. Easiest way, open your dick <laughs> Easiest way is to open up your dipstick and check the level. If it looks a little bit low, first off, make sure you're on level ground and then top it up a little bit. Try it then. If that's not the case, we'll move on to simple step number four. Number four, in the words of Toucan Sam, follow your nose. Now open up your gas cap. Don't breathe in really, really deep, but get close and give it a sniff. Does it smell like varnish or does it smell like fresh gas that you just pumped into your vehicle? If it's got kind of a varnish paint thinner smell, you've got old nasty gas in there. Now you might be able to just add what I like to call sea foam. That stuff works great. But honestly, if it's got that skunky old smell to it, the first thing you need to do, get that gas out of there. If it's a small enough generator, get yourself a container, put it somewhere where a spill won't affect anything, dump it in there. If it's a little bit bigger, you're gonna have to siphon it or pump it out of there. So get yourself, fill it full of fresh gas, put a little bit of magic in a can, that's what I call sea foam, in there, and then go from there. Number five. Is it a dirty or clogged air filter? A lot of times a generator when it's running, if it has a dirty air filter, will labor through. But if it can't pull in enough air to get started because of a dirty clogged air filter, it's not gonna start the next time around. Another thing that can happen quite often is if your generator's been in storage for a while, a nice little mouse might've decided to crawl in there, find that beautiful little foamy material and fill it full of everything they can for a mouse nest. Great place to have babies. So open it up, inspect the air filter. If it's dirty, real nasty, Take it out, try running it with the cover and the air filter out of it. If, if that works, give the air filter a really good cleaning. If you can't get it clean and you're in an absolute dire emergency, run it without the air filter for a while. Not recommended to do for months and months and months, but if it's a difference between having power and not, go with it. All right, number six, and this is the cheapest insurance you can have for a generator, but if you don't have one, it's okay. But your spark plug, learn how to take your spark plug apart. A bad, burnt up, fouled spark plug can be the worst thing for getting something started. Years ago, I worked on a mower for three hours pulling on it and it wouldn't start. And finally I said, I'm gonna swap out the spark plug. And as soon as I did, it started right up. You wanna pull that out and you got the little gap at the bottom with the two electrodes. If that's full of carbon or all built up, burnt kind of oily gas looking stuff or just black kind of charcoal-y, throw that thing away. Go get yourself a new one. Now, here's the deal. If, in fact, it's a bad day and you can't get out to get a spark plug. If you've got some emery cloth or a really fine nail file, put it between the gap and try to clean off any of that carbon you can. Sometimes that'll get you by in a pinch, but as soon as you can, better yet, keep one on hand. But as soon as you can, swap that spark plug out for a brand new one. You won't be disappointed. Number seven, if all else fails, there's a good chance, especially if it's been sitting for a while with old gas in it, that you've got a gummed up or dirty carburetor. Now, hopefully it's not gonna require tearing it all apart. That's a whole nother video for another day. But what we're gonna do is, first thing we're gonna do, which you've probably already done, was put some sea foam in the gas tank and trying to get it to run. If you can get it to run and let it run through for a while, great. That usually will clean up any kind of mild debris or gunk in the carburetor. However, if that doesn't work, the next thing it would be we're gonna do is we're gonna take the air filter off we're gonna open the choke and you're gonna spray a little bit of starter fluid in there, close the choke, start it up. Sometimes that can be enough to kickstart the motor to get it running and that will cycle the seafoam through. Try that two or three times, see if that works. 
If that doesn't work, run to your local auto parts store and pick up some carb cleaner. You're gonna do the same. You're gonna take the air filter off. You're gonna open up the choke and you're gonna spray some carb cleaner in there. Liberally, give it all kinds. Then you're gonna close it. You're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes. Then you're gonna repeat the process at least one more time, maybe two more times. And then you're gonna to try to run it. A little bit of starter fluid at the end won't hurt either. It might just kind of get it up and running. But those are the simplest things you can do to try to get this going. I hope if this video helped you, once your power emergency is over at the moment, come back and message me and let me know because my wife and I in the past were absolutely broke as a joke and I had to learn all of this stuff simply because I couldn't afford to buy something new. So now I try my best to share this with you guys. Okay, so here's one more thing, guys. If you've been through all these steps and now your generator's running, well, the biggest thing you can do going forward is to make sure it's always going to run. Two things. Number one, if you don't have one, install a trickle charger. That is just, you'll see the wire right here. All it does is plug into the wall so it always keeps your electric start up to 100%. That thing will help you more than anything. But the other thing you can do is make sure you run this for 15 minutes every two to three months. Three months is fine, just don't let it go longer than that. That is the single most important thing you can do for a generator to make sure that when the wind is blowing, the snow is falling, the rain's coming down sideways, and your wife wants coffee, the babies are crying, you're gonna be able to get this generator started. So remember that in three months when it's time to run this thing. And if you're still here at the end of this video, hit the subscribe button, stick around, because I made this video just for you and I got a whole bunch more generator videos just like this one. And if you're going down the rabbit hole of generator maintenance, check this one out over here that I did, all about making sure your generator can run when you want it to. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.